12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and happy Monday. Happy Labor Day. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Hopefully, if you're watching us, you have off work today. I, I hope so. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy Labor Day. Uh, Max, one of my favorite forms of exercise, mm -hmm. just because I've become a quote unquote lazy athlete, is walking. I, I love to walk. Okay. Um, so about how many steps a day do you average? Actually, we're going to read this and I'm going to make you go into your phone and you're going to tell me. Oh, does, from yesterday, does my phone just, track it? Yes. I had no idea. And, and your little heart health thing. Oh, this is so exciting. Okay, so you know how like most your phone or you know your, no idea. your counter all says you have to have 10,000 steps a day. They say that's the magic number. However, a new study with the American Heart Association is saying that it really is not 10,000 steps. They said 10,000 steps is great, phenomenal, but really 7,500 steps is actually enough, especially for women over 60. It hmm. says every step counts as correlated with a longer lifespan. Wow. Okay. So <clears throat> you did a great job finding the story, finding all that, found some background knowledge. Okay. Uh, did you know that all of this, the 10,000 steps meter mm -hmm. was actually a product that was marketed in 1960, 1965. So this was all like a marketing thing. Yeah. It was from a little mechanism from Japan. Oh, marketing. It gets you every time. Uh, let's see. Also, we're going to tell you that, you know, 10,000 steps, not exactly a scientific number to reach, mm -hmm. but just a fun fact here. The United States, 36.2% of our citizens obese. So you should probably walk a lot more. Well, I'm just saying, I never get to 10,000 steps. Right. I try to I'm get, okay, what, what is your number? What is your number? So I should say. Yesterday, I mean, yesterday, how much did you walk? Uh, this, because see. walking, they're saying lowers this. blood pressure. It uh, helps you di uh, process you know, for your insulin intake and this stuff. This is just not accurate. I ran a 5K this morning, so like, I okay, don't think Okay, but what was your step count? <laughs> Come on, accurate. stop making excuses, Max. 4,700 oh, from yesterday. I was at 8,500 yesterday. Okay. And I'm not even going on walks for, like. Five, all right, our producer Dylan said 500, 5,000. Oh, oh five okay, steps. five steps. Okay, well, nice. Dylan, right. you need to work on your step count. All right, regardless of what the study says, get out there, get some exercise. But if you are out and about in the heat today, Sunscreen, water, hat, big fan of the bucket hat. Yeah, Mike will talk about that more in a little bit, but first, here's today's Nine at Nine. A week after Hurricane Ida slammed into Louisiana, the exact death toll from the storm is still unknown. Half a million are still without power in South Louisiana, and search and rescue missions are still underway after the storm unleashed devastating floods on the Northeast. Federal health officials are saying Pfizer booster shots could be available for all Americans by September 20th. This, as the U.S. reaches another milestone in the pandemic, we are reaching almost 650,000 COVID-related deaths. Officials worry that the Labor Day holiday weekend may even more so fuel the current spike in positive cases. The first domestic flight left from the Kabul airport this weekend. The Qatar Foreign Ministry says the airport will soon be ready for international civil flights. Evacuation orders officially lifted in South Lake Tahoe. Fire officials say the Calder fire no longer a threat to the city, but not all is back to normal. Streets were empty over the holiday weekend and the air quality listed as poor for those choosing to return home. Many Americans are spending their Monday morning at home today celebrating Labor Day. If you're short of supplies for your Labor Day cookout, don't worry. Most major grocery stores are still open. We have a full list of what's open and closed in San Antonio right now on KSET.com. The enhanced $300 federal unemployment benefits all set to expire for Americans today. Texas, along with many other Republican-led states, already opted out of the benefits with hopes of forcing other people back into the workforce. General Motors is halting production at nearly all U.S. plants. The company says the overseas chip shortage is forcing production to idle because they can't complete a car without a chip. One of the most important holidays for Jewish communities around the world starts tonight at sunset Rosh Hashanah, which translates to the head of the year marks the start of the Jewish New Year. And you might notice a spooky twist on Pringles cans soon. The chip company is releasing a new glow-in-the-dark cans as part of its Halloween theme. And that's today's 9 at 9. Okay, so Max is learning <laughs> about, he, he did not know about the heart on your heart app on your phone. No idea about And this. he's obsessed with it now. And so he discovered his walking speed, mm -hmm. minus 
2.5 miles per hour and Max is 2.6, so he's barely beaten me. I have longer legs, but I'm also like a very casual walker. Yeah, I, I have one speed, fast. Let's go. Well, not that fast because it's slower than me. <laughs> That's fine. Let's take a lap look out of the Alamo Oh my gosh, so competitive. 79 degrees out there this morning, this Labor Day. Mike says it's going to be a hot one. This thing says I averaged 3.7 miles a day for the past seven days. Just That's great. Good for you, Mike. You do a lot of yard work, though. No, but so the whole point is you don't have to go out of your way to do like an hour long walk. It, it's just basically what adds up throughout the day with your chores and just getting around and how much you just move. This is going to have our whole newsroom in a frenzy. Like, oh, what's your walking <laughs> speed? <laughs> really? 4,498 steps yesterday. Good for yeah. you. <laughs> I did? <laughs> like, you are a healthy man. <laughs> Didn't even know that thing was tracking me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> nice morning. It is, uh, well, it's seasonably warm out there right now. We stayed slightly above average this morning, and there are a couple of showers that have been showing up. Now, obviously, well off to the east, and there's been a line which, yeah, moved right across I-10, and a couple leftover little sprinkles around here. There's a, well, arguably a front that is kind of lying across the area right now. 81 here in town, low to mid-70s in parts of the hill country, and we do have low amounts of everything across the board right now, although mold did come, go up compared to uh, yesterday. And throughout the day, it's going to be another hot one. 99 yesterday have not hit 100 yet, but there will be a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms out there. Light wind out of the north, uh, 10, 15 miles per hour is going to keep the humidity sort of in check. About a 30% chance for showers and thunderstorms today. If you don't get rain, you're just going to be getting heat and I guess get used to it because it's going to stay very, very hot. Unofficial end of summer today, but summer's not going anywhere. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, taking a look outside at our roads and this Labor Day. Hope everyone's having a good day resting our roads. Looking actually pretty clear out there. No problems at this time. No, uh, our roads are clear, but ooh, taking a Wolf. live look out at <laughs> Labor Day traffic at LAX. That is busy, busy. We had a, a busy start to the morning, but since then, our roads have been pretty yeah. clear sailing. But Bless clearly, your heart if you're uh, in LAX traffic right now. I saw now. Gio Benitez on uh, GMA reporting they're seeing millions and millions of passengers go through airports. So if you do plan to get out and about, make sure to you know prepare extra time if you're headed to the airport. Stay safe out there. All right, top stories we are following today. One man in the hospital after crashing his vehicle into a truck that had three people inside. It happened just after 10 last night, just east of downtown in the 2000 block of East Houston Street. That's where police say that man veered and hit a parked pickup truck filled with three people. The driver hit the truck, was taken to the hospital in serious condition. The three people in the truck were taken to the hospital with non-life threatening injuries. A terrifying situation for a San Antonio police officer. He was blown back after a car exploded overnight. It happened around 1 this morning in the 1700 block of Larkspur Drive near West Avenue on the city's north side. So according to SAPD, someone left a stolen vehicle at the corner of Larkspur and Baltic. SAPD officer arrived to the scene, tried to put out the flames, and then the car exploded, throwing the officer back about 10 feet. Luckily, though, he was not injured in this blast. Firefighters arrived shortly afterwards, put the blaze out. Now, police later then found two air conditioners inside that vehicle. They also believe may have been stolen. Well, cleanup is underway following an early morning house fire on the city's northeast side. It happened just before 1.30 this morning at a home in the 5800 block of Fort Latimer. San Antonio firefighters believe the fire was sparked from a lit cigarette the homeowner thought he put out. Crews were able to put out the flames quickly. No one was hurt. Damages are estimated around $2,000. And San Antonio police need your help finding those responsible for a deadly shooting on the city's southeast side. The incident happened yesterday on Hackberry and Aransas. That's where we're told three men in a gray car approached officers saying they'd been shot. That's right. One of those men died from his gunshot wounds while the other two taken to the hospital. Investigators still trying to figure out how and why this shooting happened. If you have any information that can help in the case, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number 210-224-STOP. In your morning headlines, the flooding in New Jersey causing all kinds of problems for so many families, even a gas explosion. Police in Minnesota still looking for a dozen stolen vehicles and a man saved from a storm drain. Here is David Sears with all of those morning headlines. Good morning, David. Happy Labor Day. Once again, firefighters are the heroes. Stepping up or going down in the hole to get this guy. We'll have that for you in just a second. But first, let's start with this. This is a video from inside a basement of home in New Jersey. 
All that flood. Look oh, out. Oh, my gosh. You see that? The water just came crashing right through the wall, filled up the basement. Look at all that furniture and stuff that got knocked around and ruined. Mm -hmm. The family actually trying to clean up before this happened. Now they really have a cleanup job. And the water just came in and like lifted me off my feet. I just, I just remember being to the ceiling, but I can't swim. So I was afraid to leave that spot that I knew I had a little bit of air to breathe. Yeah, I didn't see it, but right before that wall was crashed with that water, there was a one of the teenagers in that house was just walking by, so he's lucky. One town had 500 rescues. The water has receded. The cleanup continues, though. Eyes up on this one. Yeah, did you see that? Here it is again. Watch and listen. That is a house exploding. You can see what's left. Pretty much nothing. It's all taking place in New Jersey. The flooding from Ida so bad in this neighborhood. Matesh and Raleigh Patel decided to take their new board and leave the house for higher and drier ground. While they were gone, the massive flooding damaged gas lines, and then those lines exploded in that house. The house is now just rubble. The entire neighborhood actually felt it. Their AC unit in the neighbor's yard across the street. Debris crashed right through the woman's windows. The good news, the Patels weren't home. None of the neighbors hurt, as far as we know. Unfortunately, the Patels lost everything, though. I think I'm just more happy that my wife's okay, our newborn's okay. We, we, started our, we started our life literally here three years ago. We got married, bought the house the same year. In three years, all of our stuff is gone. We don't have our IDs or anything. Like we yeah. don't even know how to begin with that. Our car needs to get towed. So. Passports, license, uh, birth so certificates. Yeah, but the good news is they're still alive. A GoFundMe page has been set up for that young couple and their baby. Hey, remember that movie Gone in 60 Seconds starring Nicolas Cage and Angelita Jolie? R art imitating life here. Car dealership, Minnesota. Three car thieves coming to the service center, steal five vehicles last weekend. They got away with it and felt good about themselves, and so they went back the next night with more guys and stole more vehicles. We believe Saturday night, uh, based on video, that they came in with three of them. Um, they left with about five vehicles. They were able to shuttle out of there. And then, uh, I don't know if greed got to them, but then they came back the next night with uh, five or six accomplices and went at it again. Greed is probably a good word. Apparently, all the vehicles were moved into the service center because bad weather was on the way. The keys were left with the vehicles. At last count, they've arrested one thief. Recovered five of those stolen cars and trucks, so 12 are still out there somewhere along with several of the thieves. All right, this is a firefighter getting help from those on the street. They're actually hoisting a man up to the street level on a stretcher. This is police body cam footage. Police and fire called to the scene after a 47-year-old fell into a storm drain in Queens, New York. The fall was about 30 feet. The man's brother called it in. Police said... They weren't any pedestrian walkways nearby, and as of now, still don't know how long he was stuck down there or his current condition, Jeez. but they got him out of there. Once again, firefighters and police to the rescue. 30 feet down. 30 feet. You know, that had to hurt. Oh, so hopefully he's all right. Mm. All right. David Sears, you're coming back to talk sports? Yeah, we'll be back to talk sports. All right, we got a lot big to talk week, about. Ooh, big weekend in college big football. Big weekend. Hey, congrats on tech. Yeah, how about that, huh? How about that? What a comeback. All right, time now. 9-11, 80 degrees now. Well, still ahead on GMSA at 9 later, a 16-year-old emotional story of how she survived that deadly road collapse in Mississippi last week. But first, actor Stanley Tucci opening up about his battle with cancer. His story just ahead. Plus... Good morning. It's a book lover's dream this month because, because today is National Read a Book Day and September is National Sign Up for a Library Card Day. We'll have more information on how you can celebrate and check out some cool books later on here on GMSA at 9. Good morning and welcome back. Happy Labor Day. But on top of Labor Day, today is also National Read a Book Day, a day to silence the noise, turn off the tech, Turn the pages for a long and calm while. Alicia Bonetta is live outside Landa Library. Although all San Antonio Public Library branches are closed today to observe Labor Day, there is an opportunity to read a book. Good morning, Alicia. Hey, good morning. We'll talk about turning off the noise here at Landa Library. It's just so peaceful. There are some kids at the playground, but other than that, it's just a beautiful morning over here. And we know that reading can really transport you to any world, help you relax. So why not today that most of you are probably off at home, 
uh, dust off that book that's probably on your nightstand and turn a few pages today. If you want something more outdoorsy, well, there's, or you have little ones, this is a fun activity you can take advantage of today. Select San Antonio Public Library branches have an outdoor display of a children's book. It's called Story Walk, and it's about reading outdoors and being physically active. Currently, there are three story walks on display. Those locations are Schaefer Library, Gilbert Garza Community Center, Forest Hills, and Parman Branch Library at Stone Oak, which is the one that we visited. This story walk in particular is Looking for a Moose by Phyllis Root. Um, each story walk that we have throughout our system, again at select locations, um, will focus on a children's book and it'll have different different pages of the book on wooden stakes throughout a walking path or a trail so that people, parents, along with their children can enjoy the book as they stroll through nature and the wonderful sights available at our library locations. So the Parman branch at Stone Oak location also has these awesome bikes. You can actually bike while you read. So Max, Sarah, I know earlier y'all were talking about being active. Well, the cool thing about Parman Branch Library, it's the only one that has these bikes. So you can grab a book or maybe even your laptop and do some work while you bike. And all you need is your library card. And this month of September is National Register for a Library Card Month. So it's a perfect opportunity. And if you didn't know, the San Antonio Public Library with a library card, you have access to more than two, mi two million physical and also digital items, even including um, online homework help for the kids. So there's really something for everyone. Max, Sarah? All right. Alicia Barrera. Alicia, what do you like to read the most? Um, I was just talking to Asian over here, our photojournalist. I love reading finance books right now. Nice. Saving as much finance as I can. What about books. you? What are y'all reading? I love it. What about you? I just dusted off Edith Hamilton's Greek mythology. Okay. I love a good Greek right. mythology story. All right. Elisa Vera, thank you so much. Mike, Mike Oserhage, big reader. What do you like to read? Uh, right now I'm reading uh, Tom Clancy. Nice. I, I love, yeah. Those are so, good to get lost in. They they are yeah. because I love the fact, I mean, all the detail mm -hmm. really goes into. Um, so you got to pay attention when you're reading those books too. So, you know, what Alicia just mentioned there, because we had a guest on SA Live a couple of weeks ago from Landa Library and talking about, to emphasize on that homework help. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, 24 hours a day. And they won't give the answers, but if you don't know, you know, new math or old math or whatever it is, because yeah. I remember when my boys were about fifth grade, it was like, I'm done. I I'm out. <laughs> Long division like, note. I can't do it. Algebra and I'm done. <laughs> so, yeah, you can get all that help from the, uh, the library. Awesome. Two million plus uh, pieces of material. Mm -hmm. Which is fantastic. So today is going to be, yes, a nice day to read a book in the sunshine if you have somebody fanning you, maybe. <laughs> Good exercise for the kids. Have them fan you if you're outside today because it's going to be hot. But beautiful, beautiful Sunday evening. Yeah, it was gorgeous out there. And uh, this morning we're starting off a little bit of a haze look to the sky. But as you can see, some of that milky shade, we've got some moisture aloft in the atmosphere. All right, no hundreds yet came really close. Boy, it sure felt like it yesterday. It felt like it was 150 by noon, it seemed like. The broiler was on high. The latest... Here in San Antonio, of course, this is for the official records. The latest that we've ever hit 100 degrees for the first time in a year was back in 1985. So we've already surpassed that. So if we do indeed hit 100, that would be the latest we've ever hit 100 for the first time. Now, arguably, and Sarah Spivey and I were just talking about this, technically, if you don't hit 100, that's the, the latest ever, but that's happened actually uh, 23 times. The latest was, or the last time I should say we hit that was, or did not hit 100, was back in, in 2007. And it's going to be real close this week because we've got the air drying out. We've got hot, hot temperatures around here throughout the rest of the week. I've been watching this line of a couple of showers earlier this morning and in our vicinity, I think they've all maybe a couple leftovers there in Gonzales County. A few more well off to the east and sliding down primarily down to the south. And notice how everything was sliding down from north to south. There is kind of a little front line across the area that touched off some showers and thunderstorms yesterday up around Austin. And other than that, I mean, it was just brutally hot around most of the area. It was either 98, 99 or well up into the hundreds throughout most areas. Fredericksburg, the, the cool spot, if you will, at 97 degrees today going for 97 here in town because of a little bit of extra cloud cover around here and that little bit of a front that moved on through 96 for high at Randolph, 93 Timberwood 
Wynwood Park, but of course there will be just enough humidity when you get these temperatures so high. It didn't take much humidity to put the heat index up there into the low hundreds. We will see a better drop in the humidity in the afternoon, so that's one thing to take away the rest of the week. At least it won't be as a little more comfortable to sit outside in the shade and read a book, but it's still going to be darn hot the next few days, and we will have a couple of showers around the area today, even a few thunderstorms, and if any of these thunderstorms do pop up, could have not decent downpour, of course, but some pretty blustery winds associated with any of these thunderstorms. They may last into uh, the evening hours as well. And then after today, looks like rain chances are pretty much out of the picture. 90, partly cloudy skies at noon, and then a high temperature up to 97. A few showers, a couple of thunderstorms here and there. Unfortunately, most of us won't see rain today. And then the next couple of days, next week, I should say, 98, so it's going to be really, really close, obviously, to hitting triple digits. At least we'll have some lower humidity in the afternoons, and that's going to also equate to some slightly more pleasant temperatures in the morning. But yeah, just really, really darn hot for the unofficial start of fall. <laughs> September 22nd, that's the equinox? That's the equinox, okay. yeah. And of course, now meteorologically, we're already into fall. That was on the 1st of September. Labor Day, the unofficial, you know, start of fall. There you go. That's only on the, you know, uh, in the books. It. Speaking yeah. of books, in reality, it's <laughs> pretty darn hot. Happy National Read a Book Day, Mike. Quote, unquote, Thank fall. Thank you, sir. I'll be looking for your biography, Max. Oh, okay. I'll sign it for you. No time now. <laughs> don't need to still make me pay for it, right? 81 degrees. Well, you know, nothing's free in this world, right. Mike. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm GMSA at 9. After watching his wife's battle with cancer, a Hollywood star is sharing his own battle with cancer. His story after the break. Good morning and welcome back. Really interesting story this morning. Actor Stanley Tucci now opening up about his battle with cancer. He says his first, his wife's struggle with breast cancer helped prepare him for his own ordeal. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has this story. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the 74th annual Hunger Games! He's been a Hollywood star for decades. And that's my problem because, oh, wait, no, it's not my problem. Now, Stanley Tucci revealing his battle with cancer, telling Vera Magazine that three years ago, doctors found a tumor at the base of his tongue, saying, quote, it was too big to operate, so they had to do high-dose radiation and chemo. The actor sharing that the intense treatment caused him to nearly miss his children's graduation, saying, I had a feeding tube for six months. I could barely make it to the twins' high school graduation. I did say to one guy when I was doing a movie, I said, you know, it's very interesting. People don't really... You know, stop at stoplights that much. He goes, no, no, no. The stoplight is uh, just a suggestion. The 60-year-old Tucci revealing he initially did not want to seek treatment after watching his first wife, Kate, battle breast cancer. She passed away from the disease in 2009. Quote, I vowed I'd never do anything like that because my first wife died of cancer, and to watch her go through those treatments for years was horrible. It's still hard after 11 years. It's still hard, and it will always be hard. The actor saying his treatment was successful and the cancer is unlikely to return. The experience giving him a new outlook on life, saying, quote, cancer makes you more afraid and less afraid at the same time. You still want to get ahead and get things done. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. Wow, and I know he has that CNN show that they highlighted there. He's in Italy. Really interesting stuff. He's fabulous. Yes. I love him. Devil Wars Prada, he was great. He was great. Time now, 927, 81 degrees out. Well, if you ever wanted to check out the beach before making the drive, there's a way. Whoa. The details on KSAT.com right now. RJ Marquez has the breakdown of that story and more. But first, a story of survival. How a 16-year-old lived to tell the tale of a terrifying experience after being trapped in a sinkhole after the road she was on collapsed. That's after the break. Welcome back. A Terrible, crazy story to show you. Struggle and survival trapped at the bottom of a pit. How one teen is now sharing her story of a deadly highway road collapse. This is terrifying. Emily Williams and her mother, Amanda, were two of the people who were driving down the highway in Mississippi when a portion of it just washed away. Right, Emily, only 16 years old, speaking from her hospital bed, reliving the moments before her before and after her family's truck plunged into the deep ravine right in the dead of night. Allison Spann reports. The road has collapsed. Multiple cars are in there. 
Messages heard over the police scanner, images taken by onlookers, and frames of video shot by reporters show the scene out on Highway 26 that fateful night when part of it washed away. However, no one can tell the story of what happened quite like 16-year-old Emily Williams, who was in this truck trapped after she and her mother Amanda plummeted into the 50-foot wide ravine. I saw a big hole and then I blacked out. And I woke up and my mom was leaned over towards me and she was she was choking on her blood. She couldn't breathe or anything. As Emily worked to sit her mother upright and stop her from choking, she could still hear the terrifying chaos happening outside her family's truck. And I, I remember hearing a car coming and then I heard a crash and I heard an engine from the car because it was on top of us and it didn't really move us really much but then I heard screeching of another car tires and it, I heard people screaming and then it crashed. George County High senior Layla Jamison was in the car that landed on the Williams truck. Emily's aunt Shanna says Layla's car miraculously landed without crushing the cab Emily and Amanda were sitting in. If you look at the picture of that pileup, specifically where Emily and Amanda, where their truck landed, something as simple as the speed of the car behind them or had they not stopped, um, it, it really could have changed their fate. Ambulance from Stone County just crossed the bridge. Help arrived on the scene and Emily's mom, Amanda, was rescued first. Emily says waiting in the collapse zone for help was terrifying. All oh, honestly, I was ready to give up. I was like, we're not going to make it out here. Nobody's going to find us. Everybody's just going to keep following us. I, I was ready to give up. But when Emily heard her dad's voice booming down from above, she knew she was safe. He would make sure of it. The 16-year-old is in the hospital now, having undergone treatment for a broken leg, wrist, and a torn colon from her seatbelt. But still, she says she feels lucky. I do. I feel so lucky. I'm doing so much better. I've progressed a lot in physical therapy. I've been walking up down the halls. Wow, that is a crazy story. Wishing Emily a fast recovery. Taking a live look here in the Alamo City. Already 81 degrees this morning, only 934. Ooh. Oh man, I have to mow the yard when I get home too. Uh, I know, uh, I've been kind of looking at that going, uh, putting it off because it's been so hot this week. Yeah, let's go for the natural look in the green. Yeah. But the nice <laughs> thing is, though, if you have to get outside even in the afternoons later on in the week, we're going to have some lower humidity, so your body's going to be able to cool itself slightly better. So if you perspire then or even, you know, just dump water over your head, it will cool you off a lot better as we go on in through the week since we will have some lower humidity. 81 right now, dew points at 72, which, yeah, it's humid out there, but it's not steam bath. We're going to be up to 97 later on today. We do have a, an okay chance for some showers and thunderstorms around the area. The aquifer today did drop down one tenth of a foot and the allergens, everything is still on the low side, but mold did go up compared to uh, yesterday's reading. All right, I've been watching a couple of showers earlier this morning. Morning, and they've all but pretty much fizzled out in our area. Maybe one leftover one there just to the east of uh, Nixon. A few more off to the east, but there is a front which is kind of lying across the area, and that's going to give us uh, the kind of the, keep the focal point around here for a few showers and thunderstorms. About a, like I said, 30% chance. Heat index right now 85 degrees, so warm and humid this morning, and then partly cloudy, hot, couple of showers and thunderstorms after today. Pretty much take out the chance of rain, but again, we will have some lower humidity, so it is going to be more comfortable in the shade or if, you know, even hop out of in a pool, hop out of the water, it may actually feel kind of cool because the water will evaporate more efficiently off you, but it's still going to be hot going in through the weekend. Science lesson to start the day, Mike. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Some fun stories to tell you about a new selfie spot opening up here in San Antonio and you haven't seen ksat.com, really interesting story where the Alamo City ranks in traffic across the country. 
Might surprise you. It surprised us. Well, he didn't like that study. Plus, a popular <laughs> candy is about to go back on store shelves. RJ Marquez joins us in studio yeah. with some of these trending mm. stories on KSAT.com. I'm with you, Sarah. That study report, is a, it's a little <laughs> odd. <laughs> we'll just say that. I um, love Wallet Hub, but I don't know if they get this one yeah. right. No, yeah. it's, compl it's wrong. I'm right. sorry. Okay. <laughs> We're going to talk about, we're gonna Spoiler talk about alert, it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, we will get into those stories in just a bit. But as Mike just mentioned, it has been hot, hot, hot outside. And chances are, maybe you're thinking of taking a quick trip to the Texas coast. Well, we have some ways to check out some of those crowds before you make that drive. So some beaches have online camera feeds. So visitors can check everything out from those crowds to causeways and the surf out there in the Texas Gulf Coast. Right now on KSET.com, we have live feeds from South Padre Island, Galveston, Corpus Christi, and, of course, Puerto so this is also a great way, guys, to learn some beach names. Okay. How about Pearl Beach at South Padre? Did not know that was the name down there. Mayan Princess. The Mayan Princess. Yeah, we got That's that webcam. That's a condo. That's a condo <laughs> out there. Okay. Beaches, condos, you know. There you go. Yeah, we got cameras all over the place. We, we, okay. Yeah, right. we could check out all of these, uh, all of these live cams on KSAT.com. Okay, guys, and we were talking about the traffic here, something that, oh, of course, God. people want to check out. <laughs> okay, interesting study here. Uh, San Antonio, actually not too bad of a city to drive in compared to some other major cities across the country and, of course, here in Texas. This is according to the consumer website WalletHub.com. It ranks San Antonio 24th out of 100 U.S. cities as one of the best cities to drive in. Okay, this is where things get a little bit weird, though. Um, Corpus Christi ranked fifth. Okay, cool. Uh -huh. Austin, tenth. Wrong. Have these people ever Wrong. driven through Austin? Wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, the only time Austin can even suffice as being like tenth would be like in the middle of the night. I can't imagine. I've never driven through Austin where it's been just no. clear. Yeah. Never. Maybe take the toll road. I don't know. I've only gone a couple times. Study? Went to the Capitol and 35 was a mess. <laughs> took you five hours. It to took get so there. long. No matter what time of day. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So here's some of the things that the report looked at. It looked at cost of ownership and maintenance, traffic, and of course infrastructure and access to vehicles. And again, maintenance right there. So we were ranked higher than Dallas and Houston. So there's good. that. Yes. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. Okay. Next one here, Max. I thought about you. With this next story Aww. right here. Oh, yes. sweet. <laughs> I'm, I'm worried about what the story is. <laughs> yeah, get those phones charged and prepare to be ready for selfie time because Aww. we got a new museum. Our open. selfie king. <laughs> In San Antonio, the Texas Selfie Museum just opened this weekend. It That's features sweet. over 25 <laughs> installations with professional quality lighting so you can hey. take the perfect lighting selfie. Lighting is key, RJ. It is. It definitely Find is. Find your light. Angle lighting. There we go. Each installation uses different types of backgrounds and props like gumball machines, bathtubs, oh. wall of mirrors, disco balls and more and here's Mike about to take a selfie of us. I don't know if Mike knows how to use his I don't phone. think he's finding his light. <laughs> <laughs> you can take your phone. You could also take a professional camera. This museum is open at 314 East Commerce Street. You could buy tickets <laughs> online and in person about 22 to 25 bucks. Take a bunch of selfies there. Mike is uh, getting some some practice in right now. Oh, he figured it out. Yeah. Mike, that's, that's your go finger in front of the camera. <laughs> Okay. Um, we'll give you a lesson after this. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to show you Mike a thing what? or two here. <laughs> here we go. Find Healthy your life. I can't get so This is actually job. happening, everybody. This here is we going go. on wait, in wait, our wait, studio. Wait. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Happy uh, late. Got it. Uh, I think I got it. Beautiful lighting. All right. One okay. More story last one here. Yeah. Last one of our segment. Good news if you're a fan of candies mm. that you may have eaten 10 years ago. Okay. This We'll explain this here. After a decade of being off store shelves, the nostalgic candy, Cream Savers, is officially returning to the market. Oh. So these swirl delights, Max, are, you're very excited about this, right? These swirl delights are making a comeback. Although the candies originally came in many flavors, the only two flavors coming back for now, strawberries and cream, orange and cream, they'll be available at all big lot stores beginning in mid September. So, uh, selfie time. It is selfie time. <laughs> RJ, thank you so much for coming back for sports. Yeah, we're coming right back. Got UTSA some sports stuff going on. Roadrunners. Yeah, great win. Great win. We'll all talk right. about it here just a And, you know what, we're going to plug Mike's social media. He should be posting a selfie that he just took. It's, it's, it's blurry. There's, yeah. It's uh, bad. We're working on it. Working on you can go to the museum. <laughs> there you go. 941. Oh, gosh. 82 degrees out. <laughs> All right, speaking about football, college football is back. So is week one of the NFL. We're going to have a recap of this past weekend's game and what to look ahead to. Well, college football is fully underway, and we had a lot of action all over the Lone Star State. That's right. A lot of wins, too. Texas, A&M, UTSA all getting huge Ws, plus a big honor for Becky Hammond. David and RJ joined us back. We got a full recap to go through. Mm -hmm. So let's get after it. UT wins. <laughs>
38-18. Did they look like wow, you thought they would look like? He just wants to get through yes, Texas. Get, well, we ain't, we ain't got a whole lot of oh, time. Oh, there's so many selfies over yes. here. So let's cut the selfies and let's get to the real action. <laughs> Dang. You know, okay, okay, selfies, here's though. some of the action. Whoa. Steve Sarkeesian, a lot of selfies. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah uh, okay. So going into this game, of course, a lot of questions. Steve Sarkeesian. Bijan Robinson, though, uh, stepped up. Uh, over 100 yards rushing. A yeah. couple of touchdowns there for Bijan. He's a uh, preseason All-American. So... Probably when in doubt, just get the ball to Bijan. That's Hudson that's Carr, 14 to 21, 224, two DDs, no picks. So he had a good debut. Just to lose the game, Hudson. Yeah, so just to lose the game. Just, just, <laughs> just keep it basic. They looked a lot like last year. They didn't look a lot different mm, than, than last mm, year to me. All I, don't, right. I don't know. They, 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 they're going to have to get, yeah. get better. Yeah, all right. They're so have to uh, a lot better. So Texas compete. takes care of business. They play okay. Arkansas next, uh, an old S, uh, Southwestern Conference rival yep. there. Should be a fun one. All right, speaking of South, old Southwestern Conference wow. teams, Texas A&M. I mean, uh, look at the score. You think they, they, just, they just killed Kent, but they didn't really. I mean, poor no. um, Haynes King. Not, yep. uh, not, not great. Really great uh, three touchdowns. Of course, they uh, look. Yeah. They were going to win this yeah. game going away, no matter what. They got some nice production from the running backs, both over 100 yards there, Spiller and uh, A Chain. Yeah, yeah, but he had three picks, <laughs> and that, that's not one of them because that's an M pick yeah. off. Pick, but mind. you know, I mean, I know Justin was like worried about this game, and for a while it was close. But then yeah. you know, you get to yeah. the second and third. And it was a red, white, and blue game. You and knew they were going to win. It doesn't, it doesn't work. But uh, yeah, Justin got, texted me, and he was like, "We look awful." It was yeah. like 35. They got, they, got lot, they got a lot of work <laughs> so, to do. Now here's a team that looked pretty good. Oh, we're going. Where are we going? Where UTSA. I'm going to go to UTSA. We can talk yeah. about Tech. They looked awesome. we can say, okay, let's, 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 go let's go to talk about UTSA Whoa. real quick. First win ever versus a Big Ten opponent. Congratulations to Coach Jeff Trailer. That program is on the rise. Doing it with a lot of San Antonio kids. Frank Harris, Brendan Brady, Sincere McCormick. Okay, Sincere McCormick is the stud on this team. Mm -hmm. He rushed for 117 yards, but they would never give him the ball at the end zone. That was Brendan Brady, right? There. Brady got all the touchdowns, so Still he gets alone. all the glory. But you know, Sincere McCormick had had a pretty good day. He had, this Brady only had 67 yards, but he had two scores. Yeah, Brady so. had this one that pretty much oh. put the game away. Yeah, they had to uh, hold off Illinois towards the end there. So. And Frank Harris, 280, and yeah. one TD. They just they they look good. I awesome mean, they, stuff. They, they look like a. But you know, everybody in their conference, mm -hmm. most of the most of the top teams in the conference won, and they and they won big. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got 30 right, seconds left. You, you want to plug? You want to plug some Texas Tech? <laughs> we can talk Texas Tech for you. Texas Tech down 21-7 at half, came back and beat Houston 38 to 21. We'll just leave it at that. Congrats, so we'll, Tech. Yeah. Who do they play next? I don't know. Some small school. <laughs> small school. All right, that game's going back in Lubbock. Wanted to mention real quick, yeah, uh, Becky this Hammond. Is uh, right this here. is a big honor here. She was recently named one of the top 25 players in WNBA history. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Of course. <laughs> That's a no-brainer, right? She was, uh, she was a stud when she was playing, and she's a great assistant coach. Now we need her to be a head coach in the NBA. Let's see what happens. Yeah, we will definitely see what happens that. there. Uh, what I'm I love still, about I'm Becky. Still, I'm still thinking Pop's going to retire. Oh, okay. <laughs> Throwing that out there. I'm yeah, yeah. out there. On a Labor Day morning. Day morning. Day morning. Coming in hot. I can't, I can't <laughs> wait to see Pop. Yeah, this, this will be interesting. Time. Well, Becky would be the one to wait take to over. Great thing about Becky is that she was undrafted, worked her way through the New York Liberty at first, and, of course, was a big part of San Antonio Stars. So good stuff that's, there. That's good stuff. Congratulations to her. Mm -hmm. You go, girl. There we go. Coach one day. <laughs> David, <laughs> seriously, you got any more hot takes before you throw it to Mike? Yeah. Oh, you want me to are throw you, it to Mike? No, no, no do, are you jealous you want our selfie? Mike we can do another selfie oh, and include you, David, Can we just stop doing just selfies? Do just, just toss to a selfie. Where's the selfie? Okay, Mr. Have? Selfie King, Mike. Here we go. <laughs> Let's well, see. There, oh, there we go. Uh, hang on. Hang on. Up, Mike? Okay, so we're back there. Is that everyone? We got okay. everyone? Okay. Everybody, right? Smile. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Wow. Killed it. We did did I photo bomb it. your selfie? <laughs> Where's part about it? Huh? Did I photo bomb your selfie? Did you see yeah. that? Sure. Well, the problem is, I mean, there's a few four, and then my. Love it. They're just throwing out buzz terms. Big noggin in the foreground. Glad there's the foreground, not much so. weather. <laughs> uh, I want to show this picture again. I showed it earlier this morning. I was in Boston over the weekend, and there's the USS Constitution. It was so, so cool to see that ship and to go on it and just I mean, obviously living history. Fan fantastic.
And thanks to all the folks that have restored that and the active duty Navy that are stationed on that uh, ship. All right, we've got uh, some high clouds out there and there have been a few showers, a couple maybe showing up here and there, but notice this flow coming in out of the north to almost northeast. There's actually sort of a front line across the area. That's going to be the focal point for some uh, some showers and thunderstorms later on today, about a 30% chance for some rain today. Uh, it's going to be very few and far between, but if you do get some of these uh, thunderstorms, not only only a decent downpour, but could have some really gusty winds associated with some of these storms. Probably not reaching severe levels, but it uh, would be very blustery at times. So something to keep in mind. And uh, then as we go into the next couple of days, other than a few clouds tomorrow morning, that's pretty much going to be about it. Now, as far as the tropics are concerned, there's Hurricane Larry. That thing is just, I mean, it is a Category 3 storm. Classic looking, has got uh, looks like a donut out there. Very circular, well-defined eye in the uh, Bay of Campeche. The hurricane center is watching a disturbance right here, and it says maybe in the next five days possibly develop into something. However, the track that it would take would take it off to the northeast over toward Florida, so that would not be of any concern for us. That area of high pressure off to the west is keeping us in this somewhat northerly airflow, and that's what's pulling that front, that disturbance on through here, giving us that chance for some rain today. But this thing's going to pretty much be in control then the next couple of days, and the way things are setting up, it's going to take rain chances out of the picture, but it is going to keep us on the hot side, although the humidity is going to be lower, so it will be, like I said, a little more comfortable in the afternoons, even though it's going to be really darn hot. At least if you're in the shade, it'll be a little bit more comfortable or when Sarah's out cutting her grass and spritzing with water. That will cool you off a little bit, mm -hmm. Sarah. 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature today up to 97. Yesterday we hit 99. Again, we haven't hit 100 officially in San Antonio yet this year. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms out there, maybe some blustery winds, and then the next few days it is just going to stay very, very hot. Upper 90s all the way through the weekend. Sarah, Max? Good morning. Good morning, Kelly. Coming up on live, it's our Labor Day backyard party. We've got Dove Cameron, Bethany Frankel, and Isaac Boots live on live. See you then. All right. Hi. Good, Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back. <laughs> and then if you go that way, down the hall <laughs> and to the lunchroom and to the left, it's going to be very happy Labor Day. <laughs> so Labor Day. very exciting week here at KSAT. We are starting a new show starting this Wednesday at 11 a.m. And of course, Two of our favorites, RJ Marquez and Alicia Barrera, both of which you've seen in the last hour. Yeah, this is so exciting. I'm very excited for them. So basically, the show is going to be a viewer-driven newscast to bring you accurate reporting and entertaining conversation around the biggest news stories of the day. Like Max was saying, it starts this Wednesday, September 8th, where you can join the conversation, ksat.com, with Alicia and RJ, again at 11 a.m., and you can find it on ksat.com and our ksat streaming app as well. All right, before people go, Mike, what do they need to know about the weather? Ah, uh, just very hot this week. Today, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms out there. Most of us, unfortunately, won't see rain. If you do, could have some hefty, uh, some very strong winds, you know, some decent downpours, but uh, we'll have to watch out for some strong winds, but very hot all week long. Always but lower humidity. nice to have you on GMSA Thank at night. I mean, I feel like it's Sunday morning almost. Here. This is fantastic. We need the new, uh, the dapper suit. What is it? Oh, the, uh, the seersucker? Seersucker suit. It's after Labor Day. Happy so. Labor Day.